The member for Riverton. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Speaker. I'm so proud to stand before you all as the member for Riverton. Let me first of all acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'm acutely aware, Madam Speaker, I'm addressing the chair in historically auspicious circumstances. Congratulations on being elected as the first female speaker of the House, Madam Speaker. Okay. I'm proud to be serving under you in this House. With your permission, Madam Speaker, may I say a few words in my mother tongue. Arul <laughs> Iriyoda yana asirvada nage, jana seve maadu daga sikhi da vaipu ga, kodana kodi nandri. In my culture, Madam Speaker, we pay respect to our elders, and that's what I was saying in my mother tongue. I come from a state of Tamil Nadu in India. In that respect, I would also like to say a few words in Tamil, Madam Speaker. Yadu Mure Yavaram Keli. Three thousand years back, a poet, Kani and Pumundrana, said, Yadum Ure Yavaram Keli. The meaning of that is any place is our place, any people are our people. He spoke about unity in diversity. 3,000 years back. I'm really proud to be representing Riverton, Madam Speaker, which is the most multicultural community in the state. At this juncture, I would like to thank the contribution of the previous member for Riverton, Dr. Mike Nahan. On conversation with many people in Riverton, I came to know that he had served the electorate to the fullest ability. Though we do not agree with each other on, on our political views, one thing we agree on is making Riverton better. I wish him good luck and I hope he has a safe and happy retirement. Madam Speaker, I was born in a town called Kotagiri in the Nilgiris district in the state of Tamil Nadu in India. It was a huge transition for me to move from India to UK and then moving to Western Australia, eventually making WA my home. During the process, I've had the opportunity to connect with various communities. I've always respected my connection with the elderly community. I have been welcomed by the Indian community and the Chinese community here in Western Australia. I have dealt with, starting from newborns to adolescents to young mothers and many sporting communities in the electorate of Riverton. And I am looking forward to working across the board in serving the community in the coming years, Madam Speaker. Education is close to my heart for many reasons. As a kid, when my dad took me to the doctor, who was the most qualified person in town, I went into the room and said, good morning, doctor. How are you today? That made my dad so proud. He was going about town saying, my son can speak English. Today, I'm sure he's more proud that I'm addressing the assembly in Western Australia. My parents had a big dream of providing me with the best education possible, Madam Speaker. For their aspiration, there were reasons. My mom could not continue beyond year two because she had to care for a cousin of hers so that her aunt could go to work 
to put food on the table. My father lost his father when he was one and a half years of age. He was brought up in his maternal uncle's house. It, is, it wasn't the same as his own house. At the age of 15, after year 10, he had to give up his education because he felt he was obliged to contribute towards the income of the family. But that did not stop them from contributing towards giving me the best education possible in the world. I am thankful to them today, Madam Speaker. I would like to mention their names. My father's name is Krishnan Belli, and my mom's name is Saraswati Krishnan, and she is mainly known as Pachi Amal. My community recognizes her as Pachi Amal. I can remember the days my mom was sitting with me, though she'd only studied up to year two when I was studying late in the night. I remember the days my mom was repeatedly ironing my school uniform, repeatedly polishing my shoes to make sure I went to school spick and span. I'm very thankful, Madam Speaker, for them to have contributed towards my education. I'm really proud to say and I'm very fortunate to represent Riverton because people in Riverton have DNA of education in them. I'm proud to say I represent an electorate which has got three schools, two public, one private, Willerton Senior High School, Rossmoyne Senior High School, and All Saints College. All topping the table in the state over and again. People move into the electorate to be able to provide the best education for their kids like my parents did for me. I'm very fortunate and proud to have made a commitment of $12.5 million to Willerton Senior High School and $35 million to Rothmine Senior High School and also to primary schools towards STEM education. I know the people of Riverton are very proud to be providing the best education to their kids. Being a medical educator, an adjunct associate professor in Curtin University, and also a medical educator in Notre Dame University and the Royal College of GPs, I very often see medical graduates coming through either Willerton Senior High School and Rossmoyne Senior High School, which makes me even proud. I look forward to the next four years, Madam Speaker, with the help of our Education Minister, Honorable Sue Ellery, and the leadership of our Premier, Mark McGowan, to deliver the promises we've made for the schools and continue to fight for the pride of Riverton. My background is health, Madam Speaker. I graduated from JSS Medical College in the Mysore city of Karnataka state of India. I'm very proud of my college and my teachers who taught me the basic values of medicine, which were more valuable than the clinical skills they taught me. I started as a GP in my hometown, serving my own community, my own families. I had a great opportunity in India to work in a remote area with basic facilities yet trying to provide the highest quality of care to the patients I cared for. It was a huge transition moving from India to UK. Strange things happen in people's lives. 7th of July, 2005, something happened that I woke up 1.30 a.m. in the morning. I've never done this in my life. I started ironing my clothes for the next day. I went and had a shave. Maybe that was the reason I left a little bit early the next day morning. When I reached the Wimbledon station, I was told the bombing had gone off in central London. I escaped the bombing by a few minutes, probably because I left home a little early. In the aftermath, I saw an efficient health system working 
effectively for the people in need. I was so proud to be part of the management team where I was a senior house officer in public health in the Southwest London Health Authority. We were in charge of St. George's Hospital and Mayday Hospital, and we were managing the aftermath situation that day. My move to Australia, Madam Speaker, I started my career as a GP in Byford. Day in and day out, my work involves dealing with people's problems. It is my duty to find out what their issues are and to also find out solutions to their problems. Now in my role, with a little bit of difference, I'm sure I will be providing a holistic approach in finding the problems of my electorate and also solutions. I'm proud to say, Madam Speaker, I was part of the management team managing two COVID clinics, namely the High Wickham Respiratory Clinic and the Alexander Heights Respiratory Clinic, providing service or COVID-related services to the people of Western Australia. I'm proud to be joining the team which managed the pandemic in the best way in the world. My sincere thanks to the Health Minister, Honorable Roger Cook, who was the architect of the management plan of the, of the pandemic. The whole world is looking up to the Premier, Mark McGowan, as to how well the pandemic was managed. And I'm thankful to him on behalf of every West Australian, Adam Speaker. I was fortunate to be a small business owner in 2010 when I was owning the first practice in South Lake. I took so much pride in looking after my people, be it doctors, nurses, staff, cleaners, whoever were involved in running the practice. With that experience, I can empathize with the moms and dads who are small business owners, who take the courage, who give the commitment, who work hard to make things work. We all acknowledge the difficult times they've been through in the pandemic in the last year. I am confident under the leadership of our Premier Mark McGowan, all these small businesses will come out the other end more stronger and better. Madam Speaker, this House has got a lot of unique things about women. 100 years since the first woman was elected to this parliament, the 100th 100, 100 woman member in the parliament, the member for Hillary, is Caitlin Collins. 52% of women in this house being women, the first woman speaker of the house. And also, I would like to acknowledge Honorable Kate Dows, President of the Legislative Council, who's also been my mentor and friend, and the first female president of the Legislative Council. In these circumstances, I will fail in my duties if I do not speak about women. I was fortunate to see four generations of women. The first, my grandmother. Her name was Rukia Mal, born to Moka Gowder. She was so proud of her father. She became a widower when she was one, my, when my father was one and a half years of age. She decided not to get married, but to care for the family. I remember the days when I came back from school in my suit and tie, and my grandmother would have returned from the farm full of mud and dust. That did not stop me from giving her a hug, Madam Speaker. I thank her for teaching me the values of hard work, being humble, taking every opportunity to help people when you can. The second person in my life, or the second generation of women I saw was my mother, Madam Speaker. She till, till, till today 
regrets that she was not able to study further. But there was a time where I insisted, I sat with her and made sure she could sign her name and today she can sign Madam Speaker. I thank her for every bit that she has done for me to be standing you all before as who I am today. The third generation of women, I hope you all have guessed, <laughs> my wife, Yamini, she's a doctor. She's a great woman in herself. I have no shame in accepting, Madam Speaker. She is my better half. <laughs> we have been through good times, bad times, all times. She stood with me every time. There was a time when I had to quit my job because I was preparing for exams to qualify to go to the UK. <laughs> she was the single earner. Maybe it was in my culture, I was hesitant to approach her and ask her for money for my petrol expenses and my <laughs> pocket expenses. She would realize that and put money in the shirt pocket, which would pleasantly surprise me and make me emotional as well. When we were living in London, Madam Speaker, there were times when we were renting a single bedroom apartment because I was so scared to break the lease with the fear of being ending up paying two rents. In the one bedroom apartment, she would occupy the bedroom with my kids where I was left on the couch for months. The house wasn't big or luxurious, but it was home, Madam Speaker. It made us feel so comfortable and united as a family. Maybe one small benefit she had was she escaped from my snoring and quietly slept in the bedroom. <laughs> Madam Speaker, may I seek an extension? Extension granted. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank my wife for standing with me in my most difficult times, and I'm sure she'll stand with me till the end of my life. The fourth generation of women I would like to mention, Madam Speaker, is my daughter. During my campaign, a lot of people asked me, how are you going to be able to manage being a parliamentarian, being involved with multiple businesses? She stepped in and also stepped up to take up the responsibilities, relieving me from the duties. I'm proud of her, Madam Speaker, to have been able to step into my shoes in the business side of things so that I can focus on the people of Riverton and aim towards making Riverton better. I was very fortunate to attend an RSL Anzac dinner. One of the speeches there brought tears in my eyes, Madam Speaker. We always pay respect to the war veterans who fought for the freedom which we are enjoying today. We often forget the women <coughs> behind those men. In 1916, the women in Australia knitted 80,000 pairs of socks to send to Europe for the men who were fighting there in the cold environment. That is just physical work. But what about the mental strain those women were taking? Those women were not certain whether those husbands were coming back or not. The kids were not certain whether the fathers would return back or not. And many did not make it back, Madam Speaker. I think I've spoken enough about women. I once again salute every woman who has contributed towards the success of every man. My journey in politics started with a text message from my friend, member for Jandakot, Yas Mubaraka. Have you got time for a coffee?
I replied, yes. And the first thought process was, he's jumping in early for his fundraising for next year's election. <laughs> <coughs> Entering into the room for the coffee, I was so annoyed with him. That wasn't the last time, I mean, that wasn't the first time, and it won't be the last time, Madam Speaker, because <laughs> he was sitting with Sal there. Said, he's not given me a heads up. My thought process, Raj Selvendra owns a practice in East Victoria Park. If I'm going to be negotiating buying this practice, Yas has not given a chance to have a heads up or preparation in that. <laughs> but then, a few minutes into the conversation, it was about me putting my hand up to run for Riverton. I took a week's time. I'm very pleased to say I accepted to put my hand up. And then the process started. I knew I can only win this election by door knocking. I went to the member of Southern River, Terry Healy, <laughs> because I was told he is stopping the table. He gave me a four hours lecture on door knocking, Madam Speaker. <laughs> After knocking 14,000 plus houses twice, not a single house I've been able to execute all the tactics he's taught me. <laughs> I will make an attempt next time to follow all of the advice. <laughs> At one point, he was visibly upset because I was beating his records time and again. <laughs> There were many door knocking stories which were so interesting. We enjoyed talking to residents of Riverton, Madam Speaker. But one particular story I would like to share with the House. I got the opportunity where our Premier Mark McGowan was knocking doors with me. As we were walking in the streets of Williton, we saw a car parked with headlights on. The Premier and me decided we are going to go and knock this door. Premier went, knocked the door. A bloke comes out and he says, your headlights are on, mate. And he says, thank you. We were walking away. He kept chasing us. Are you Mark McGowan? <laughs> he said, yes. I heard a week later, an elderly lady walked up to the premier and said, I'm going to be voting Labour this time because I heard you saved my son's battery. <laughs> It was difficult, Madam Speaker, as we all can acknowledge, door knocking wasn't easy. And one evening while I was driving back, my son also helped me during the campaign, bringing his friends along for door knocking. And one evening after a tired day of door knocking, we were driving back home, and my son asked me a question. Dad, which was the best door you knocked today? That spun my thoughts, which was the one. Before I thought, he gave the answer as well, saying, that door is yet to be knocked, Dad. It is our own door where Mom's going to be inviting us inside with a big smile and a hot plate of food on the table. I thank my family for the support that they provided me during difficult times. And it wasn't an easy campaign. I would say I survived one of the most brutal campaigns. At this juncture, it's time to say thank you to many people, Madam Speaker. Please bear with me with the many names which I have to read. I would like to, I would like to acknowledge my wife's father, who's been my father ever since we got married. He's 79 years of age, still serving as a doctor in his hometown. He's got a nickname. 10 rupees doctor, because the fee he charges is 10 rupees, which is equivalent to 20 cents per consultation, Madam Speaker. Unfortunately, we don't have my wife's mom, my late mother-in-law, but I'm sure she will be proud to see me achieve what I've achieved today. 
I would like to thank a lot of my family members who have supported me morally all the way back from India. Kamal Kumar, Ranjini, Nitin Belli, Monika Sri Kumar, Tej Tejas, Sivakumar Donan, Vasanti Sivakumar, Murugesh Raman, Sunil Nataraj, Ramya Sunil, Chandrasekharan Kari, Praburam Kari. On behalf of my family and my community, I would like to sincerely thank my mentor, my friend, Honorable Kate Daust, President of the Legislative Council, who was my campaign director. She worked things out in such detail that she even made time for my family to be spending with me. She was checking on my family if they were coping with all the stress. I'm sincerely thankful to her to have run an excellent campaign. I thank my campaign manager, Cassandra Maney, who had an eye for details. She made sure day-to-day -day issues ran very smoothly. Mark Fahey, my field officer, brought in a lot of positive energy every time we were out on the field. I take this opportunity to thank Lenda Oshalam, who put the campaign plan together, which was executed excellently. I would like to thank a few names. I had the biggest campaign team of volunteers. I will be here till the evening if I was mentioning all those names. I will mention only a few, Madam Speaker. <coughs> Karishma Arora, Arthur Clancy, Dilip, Mithun Dharmaraj, Murli Manohar, Uttam Brahma, Lakshmi Chandra Mohan, Devi Sridharan, Rekha Somasundaram, Dulmini Vijay Bandara, Nipuna De Silva, Divi Bhavarisetti, Ponnai Umapati, Melvin Matthew, Babu Kurian, Satish Kailasam, Venugopal Natarajan, Sri Krishna Chauda Varapu, Achantodi Vasudev. Some special names, Madam Speaker. Kiran Putapa, who's been my uni mate and the longest person I know in Western Australia. Vishnu Gopalan, who take the brunt, who took the brunt off my business side of things, being my business partner, to give me more time for campaigning. Dr. Paddy Ramanathan, who's been my mentor since I arrived in Western Australia. Praveen Kalimath, Lachlan Blom, Lachlan Blom, Will Ho, Alex Knowles, Matt Cab, Claire Comrie, Ali White, Fred Parkey, David Barry, Bevan Green. I would like to thank the Labour headquarters, Tim Picton, Ellie Whitaker, Hugo, and the team who supported us big time. I was very fortunate, Madam Speaker, to have some veterans involved in my campaign, particularly Minister Bill Johnston, who's had various one-on-one -on -one sessions with me <laughs> with all his experience, guided me all the way through. A special thanks to P.I. Yang, who especially helped me connect with the Chinese community and was a mentor all throughout and ra ran the phone booting sessions. Sue Ellery, Rita Safioti, Peter Tinley, Ben Wyatt, Roger Cook, Paul Papalia, and sometimes I even had Premier Mark McGovern handing out how to vote cards in my electorate. Before I finish, Madam Speaker, I would like to take this opportunity to send my prayers and thoughts to people in India who are going through a very difficult time. I thank our Premier Mark McGovern to have approved a $2 million funding for sending material and relief material to India. Before I conclude, Whatever it has been, when I won the election, there was one sentence which is still echoing in my head, which my father said. My father told me, the people of Riverton have now accepted you as their son. Do to them what you would do to me. Thank you, Madam Speaker.